sometimes you take something on and you feel there is no solution. I didn't feel that here. I felt it's going to be very challenging, but not that there's no solution. When I came first time and I saw this site, I said, this is like the, the unbelievable site. I never realized how the geoling would come straight into the spot like that. It's where the city was born. I thought it was a very big responsibility. And that's where the idea of the buildings could give the feeling of sailboats. It's, it's part of the river. It's almost like the project is the front of a ship that's moving the city forward. Chongqing is a rugged city. The topography just tells you the story. People have to go upstairs and downstairs. There are tough people here in Chongqing, and it's a tough landscape. And because from the beginning of my career as an architect, I've been working in many countries. You know, my first building was in Canada. Within three, four years, I was building in Jerusalem and Israel. I built in developed countries, developing countries. And one of my uh, strengths, I think, as an architect is that I learned from, the from day one, immerse and I understand the place. You need to understand what's important to people, how they live. You need to understand the limitations of the construction industry. You need to understand how to make an architecture that belongs in such a way that people feel that they, it belongs to them. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> to, welcome. to be able to visually realize you've got the valve, but not but so. That means it'll cut the shops off, and you'll see through. You'll know that it's there, and from the other side, you'll know that something is going on, but this is too exposed. Too exposed. Too exposed. That, that transparency is, is not good. There's a design at the scale of a restaurant. Mostly interior design. It's all about atmosphere and materials and details. But when you design in the city, one million square meters, you're designing the life of the people who will work and live there. One of the questions we discussed this morning when saying is the pre-function of the big room if you have a wedding or something like that, very exposed to the mall. You don't see through this. I don't think that's appropriate. The, the holes should be bigger, but maybe you make them out of reflective material. I don't know how you do that. I'm nervous about the lighting of these rooms. I don't get scared very easily. Uh, my office was, more than I. Chongqing is an incredibly interesting city. And when projects are coming of that scale, it all starts with dealing with the public. My name is Christopher Mulvey. I'm the managing principal with Softy Architects. The scale of Chongqing is almost unlike any other that we've done before. I think in terms of building area, it's probably the largest project we've done. In terms of complexity, it's probably the most complex project we've done. It has the subway, it has the bus terminal, it has the shipping terminal, it has retail, housing, offices, hotel. So when we started this project, I thought, how will we solve all the problems? Because it's all, all integrated, you know. We're building the bus terminal. They didn't set their own spec. 
It's open to the public. It's part of the building. People are going to come down in the future. This is what we tended. This is great. That's what we tended. What does that mean? We tended paint? Yeah. Not, not, not adequate. Where did the city start? Where, where? Here, where we stand. Right here? Yeah, that's where the gate was, the, the old gate. So I'd say complexity, and I'd also say, can you make a million square meter project human, intimate? More urban issues arise, and it becomes more of how does this project sit within the city? I think Moshe was struck by how significant and important uh, Chow Temen Plaza was, but how disconnected it was from the city. And I never really understood what Chatham Plaza was all about. During the construction, particularly like when, when the plaza was cut off, we had a lot of negative comments because they thought we were dominating or overshadowing this beautiful historic place in, in the city. We made a lot of modifications to help increase or improve the connection between the city and the plaza. The city is high, and then Chiatomen is low. One of the achievements, I think, of our design is that we dedicated the whole roof of the podium. We're able to come straight from the streets of the city to the roof of the podium. So we have given the city a rather large park. Well, I think the dilemma of architecture today is that more and more uh, we are building in high density in big cities. So one of our objectives is to create as much nature, gardens, terraces, open space, as much light to bring in, arrange the building so much more light comes in. This is very nice where you get the reflections of the trees. You see the Yangtze, you see Jialing, but no great parks. Nature didn't survive the urbanization. It hasn't been easy getting these big trees here and keeping them happy. They're not going to survive. The risk is not just the money. The risk is we cannot replace those trees. The first design was an open garden, but I came a few times, it was foggy, it was cold. Then I came at summer, it was very hot. So I decided we cover it. Can you tell us about the evolution between Maria Bay and Rafa City? Well, I think it's similar in the concept of trying to create vertical and horizontal activity in the city. But it's very different in its details because Singapore is tropical and has no winds, but there's no, no seasons. Yeah. And Chongqing has seasons and it's cold and it's hot and it's foggy. So because of that, architecture tends to be different, but the principle is the same. Skyscrapers go this way, vertically. And what we did here with the conservatory is we put one skyscraper horizontally. And there's other advantages. You're connecting one part to the other, not just on the ground, but also in the air. So I think in the future, we will have many vertical and many horizontal skyscrapers. And this is just a hint of what's possible. Now, given what's going on in the city with all the buildings going crazy, I think changing colors is not a bad idea, except that I don't think we should do red. We should leave this for the special occasions. Otherwise, 
what do you do on special days? On holidays, on uh, Chinese New Year, on September. Mm -hmm. The red should be a very special treatment. It's very dangerous to look into the future too far. If you asked me in 1973, when I came to China for the first time, what would be in China in 50 years, I would have never imagined what we have come to see. So there are many variables which we should be humble enough to realize that we do not know. But we do know some things. The problem of architecture today is the mega projects in the mega cities. The architect is the advocate of the people who are going to live and work in a building. He is their voice.